leadership teams must be chosen. Jesus made a conscious decision to choose each of the twelve disciples to serve on his staff. He did not put the matter up for a vote. Rather, he decided the personnel matters himself. Jesus withdrew to the Sea of Galilee after leaving the synagogue where he had been teaching. Jesus was very popular, and a crowd followed him. A great assembly gathered, not only from Galilee, but from faraway regions as well. The group was so significant that Jesus asked for a small boat so that he could push off from shore to avoid being destroyed by those who came for healing. Mark chapter 3 verses 7 to 19 Jesus withdrew to the sea with his disciples, and a large crowd from Galilee followed him, and also people from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and from the region beyond the Jordan, and around Tyre and Sidon. A vast number of people came to him, because they were hearing about all the things that he was doing. And he told his disciples to have a small boat stand ready for him, because of the many people, so that they would not crowd him. For he had healed many, and as a result, all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. Whenever the young clean spirit saw him, they fell down before him and screamed out, You are the Son of God. Jesus sternly warned them again and again not to tell who he was. He went up from the hillside and called those whom he himself wanted and chose, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve disciples, so that they would be with him for instruction, and so that he could send them out to preach the gospel as apostles, that is, as his special messengers, personally chosen representatives, and to have authority and power to cast out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, and James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James. To them he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder. And he also appointed Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew, Nathaniel, and Matthew, Levi the tax collector, and Thomas, and James the son of Elphius, and Thaddeus, Judas the son of James, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. As Jesus invites those he wanted to come with him, the massive crowd becomes smaller. Jesus appointed twelve from among those who came to him at that time. The biblical concepts revolt by the word poyeho, which can be translated as to make or to create. The Lord appointed Moses and Aaron to rule Israel, and Moses appointed able men as heads over the people to serve in those roles. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 6 Then Samuel said to the people, It is the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron, and brought your fathers, ancestors, up from the land of Egypt. Exodus chapter 18, verse 25. Moses chose able men from all Israel and made them heads over the people, leaders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens, from the highest to the lowest judicial levels. The initiative in forming and identifying the twelve is Jesus. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1. But now, this is what the Lord your Creator says, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you from captivity. I have called you by name. You are mine. The twelve are symbolic of the restoration of the twelve tribes of Israel, and Jesus stands over them as their leader. The selection of the twelve implies a rejection of the powers that be in Jerusalem. The names of the twelve give us few hints about their status, upbringing, or religious instruction, but Jesus gives the first three memorable nicknames. Simon is given the name Peter, Petros, which means rock, and James and John, who were previously introduced as Zebedee's sons, 
are dubbed the Sons of Thunder. One can only speculate what occasioned these names, or what they reveal about these men, their character, their faith, or their future roles. Judas is named as the Betrayer, a title bestowed on him by the Church rather than Jesus. The Twelve had a dual mission. Matthew's Gospel concludes with Jesus' pledge to be with his disciples until the end of the age. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 Teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstance and on every occasion, even to the end of the age. By contrast, Mark stresses the disciples' task of being with Jesus. Mark chapter 3 verse 14 And he appointed twelve disciples, so that they would be with him for instruction, and so that he could send them out to preach the gospel as apostles, that is, as his special messengers, personally chosen representatives. What does this imply? Most importantly, it designates the Twelve as witnesses to his ministry, having learned from him and being qualified to pass on and authenticate the traditions concerning him. Luke chapter 1 verse 2 Exactly as they were handed down to us by those with personal experience, who from the beginning of Christ's ministry are witnesses and ministers of the word, that is, of the teaching concerning salvation through faith in Christ. Although there are twelve disciples, Jesus appeared to have an inner circle. An inner circle of Peter, James, and John accompanied Jesus at pivotal moments in the gospel. When he raises Jairus' daughter from the dead, when he is transfigured on the mountain, and when he prays in Gethsemane. Mark chapter 9 verse 2 Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured, changed in form before them, and began to shine brightly with divine and regal glory. Mark chapter 5 verse 37 And he allowed no one to go with him as witnesses, except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. Being with Jesus is a challenge that is far more difficult than it may have initially appeared to be. The Twelve will need to gain an understanding that simply being in the same room as Jesus and actually being with Him are two very different things. The latter indicates that they are obligated to follow Him wherever He goes and take part in the labor that is associated with the ministry as well as the harassment that is caused by the crowds and the same bitter draft of suffering. Mark chapter 3 verse 20 Then he came to a house in Capernaum, and the crowd formed again, so many people that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat a meal together. Mark chapter 10 verse 39 And they replied to him, We are able. Jesus told them, the cup that I drink, you will drink, and you will be baptized with the same baptism with which I am baptized. Another reason for the creation of the Twelve is that God requires human collaboration in order to touch, enlighten, and heal other people. The second assignment for them is to carry out the commission given to them by Jesus, to carry on his work by preaching and driving out demons. Their friendship with him is intended to result in them performing acts of service that are of benefit to other people. They are not just on the receiving end of this outbreak of power, but are to become canals by which it touches others. We should point out that the task of preaching and exercising demons was not limited to the Twelve and Mark. It was instructed to the cured Gerasene demoniac to go back to his family in Decapolis and to preach to them about what the Lord had done for him. Mark chapter 5 verses 19 and 20 Jesus did not let him come, but instead he said to him, Go home to your family, 
and tell them all the great things that the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So he obeyed and went away and began to publicly proclaim in Decapolis, the region of the ten Hellenistic cities, all the great things that Jesus had done for him, and all the people were astonished. One is remembered only as a man who does not follow the disciples, a reporter to be victorious in casting out demons in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9 verses 38 and 39. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not accompanying us as your disciple. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for there is no one who will perform a miracle in my name and be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. The special function of the twelve that is not granted to others is to be with Jesus. Mark chapter 5 verses 18 and 19 As he was stepping into the boat, the Gentile man who had been demon-possessed was begging with him, asking that he might go with him as a disciple. Jesus did not let him come, but instead he said to him, Go home to your family and tell them all the great things that the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. Note what we learn about team building from Jesus' selection of the twelve. Number one, selection. He handpicked them. He prayed all night about it. Luke chapter 6 verse 12. Number two, motivation. He selected the ones he personally wanted. There was chemistry. Number three, connection. He chose them to be with him. He modeled life in close proximity. Number four, permission. He released them and gave them specific assignments. Number five, commission. He empowered them and gave them authority to do their job. As leaders, we can only lift others up when we're standing on a firm foundation. Purpose, sincerity, and humility provide us with a strong and stable foundation from which to lead. The answer to the question, why do you wish to lead, is found in your purpose. The best leaders have a higher purpose. Their why is more than just making money or achieving self-actualization. They perceive leadership as a calling rather than a job and they are excited about the prospect of using their particular talents to accomplish something big that will survive them. Authentic leaders have self-awareness, self-respect, and emotional maturity. They prize integrity above image and seek to build trust with others on the grounds of their personal character. Humility is often wrongly associated with depreciating and devaluing ourselves. However, True humility flows out of gratitude and comes when we credit God for our blessings and others for our successes. As Rick Warren teaches, a humble leader does not deny his strengths. He's simply honest about his limitations. Humble leaders feel no need to trumpet their status, are unthreatened by criticism, and revel in the accomplishments of others. They put their pride aside so that others have room to shine. Our question for the day, what book of the Bible is your favorite?